We travel with the DG Assam Rifles, Lieutenant General PC Nair to Vijayanagar to understand the strategic significance of the salient on the India-Myanmar border in Arunachal Pradesh. This is Stat News Global. I'm Amitabh Revi. We're extremely privileged to have with us the Director General of Assam Rifles, Lieutenant General PC Nair, and we are extremely privileged to be in one of the easternmost inhabited locations in India, Vijayanagar. General. Thanks, of course, for facilitating this trip. We've been trying for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. You explain the extremely rich history of this place and beautiful place that it is. Uh, right, uh, Amita. Firstly, uh, when I speak of history of this place, I want to cover it in two parts. Sure. One is the place itself, and then uh, the role that Assam Rifle has played in uh, being here. So, uh, this complete bowl is about. Uh, 730 square kilometers. When we talk of the Vijayanagar ball, Vijayanagar dagger, as you call it, it's in actually in the shape of a dagger which uh, juts into Myanmar. 730 square kilometers, like I said, and uh, it's uh, encircled by two prominent ridges. One is uh, what we see in the front is all uh, Kunmun Ridge, uh, and what you see behind are the uh, Patkai ridges. So, between these two ranges is enclosed or sandwiched this bowl. Uh, the history, if we go back in time, the first time that people came to know of this was uh, during the World War, sometimes 1942-43 Second World War, uh, when the Allied forces who were uh, operating in Burma, uh, now Myanmar, uh, somewhere this side, uh, they withdrew as the Japanese were advancing through Burma. Uh, so now they came through a certain place uh, called uh, Fort Hertz then. Now it is called as Putao. It's about 35 kilometers uh, due east as the crow flies. Right. And uh, let me indicate this to you on ground. Sure. If you see, uh, that's a yellow flag. Yep. Uh, from the yellow flag, if you go up upwards towards the sky, yeah. a little to the right, you see a saddle kind of a figure. Right. That is where this uh, border pillar or BP-184 lies. So it was from there that uh, some of the Allied troops came in uh, into this bowl and they were rescued by the Assam Rifles then. Their further maintenance was also carried out through air for which Assam Rifle had a major role to play. Uh, two other places I've, I shall show, but before that, let's come back to history. Mm -hmm. uh, thereafter, this area came into prominence uh, only in the early 50s and as we graduated towards uh, the 60s and specifically the 1962 uh, Indochina War. Now, uh, in this, it is not that the 1962 uh, war happened all of a sudden. There were certain overtures that were being made to the Chinese, the increase in the troop deployment, their statements, they are becoming very hostile. So that is when we realize that this is a particular part of the territory or country which we need to have a physical presence on. Uh, because this uh, place is strategically very important. So that is uh, in so far as the history goes. Just picking up from the last point, General, that you're saying it's strategically very important. Now explain that to a lay viewer. Okay. Uh, why this... Uh, 730 square kilometers is very important is from this you get an approach to the southern banks of Brahmaputra. What that means is from here you would head straight to Dibrugar, Jorat and onwards to Guwahati. There is absolutely no need of crossing the Brahmaputra. So just uh, imagine a scene where you have troops deployed along the northern borders, along the high reaches uh, of Arunachal. But what right behind on the southern bank if uh, somebody just comes in. So there lies the significance of this. Why it was not occupied was because of the remoteness. Uh, as we flew in, you saw how dense the jungles were. You have adequate uh, shots of that to show it to your viewers. Uh, so when we talk of hostile terrain, it will not be understood till the time they actually see this. Once you uh, give these shots, I'm sure they'll understand. So let's go back in time. That's when we decided to come here. This complete area was like that. It was all uh, covered by 
forests and uh, that is when we decided to come here so that is the strategic importance of this any other passes that you would like to point out the significance of yeah this the, the, there are two important passes here one is the chokan pass and the other is the hampungan pass if i can indicate this to you on ground uh if you look straight ahead yeah. uh you have this kanat line of kanat and then you have a blue board that has been put yeah. ahead of which you have a pink flag Correct. on the tree Correct. uh somewhere in line with this 47 kilometers from here uh, air in distance is where the chokan pass lies the other pass um, i wish to indicate is again let's look behind uh if you see there's there's this uh, red flag yeah. on the left uh straight ahead yeah i had of this view point this red flag which you see yeah uh from the red flag again in that uh direction lies the hapungan pass so these two passes are actually the only points of entry into this bowl vijayanagar bowl mm. so we knew the importance significance of this in the 50s when an aerial recce of this was carried out by assam rifle troops and it was realized that these two passes have to be occupied if we have to deny occupation of this bowl by anyone you've just met in a lot of uh, people here who the sam rifles itself has settled in terms of your ex servicemen now since you've already established the significance of the area now could you explain the significance of establishing people or inhabiting the place as well okay uh, interestingly i'm thought i'm glad you asked this question the first inhabitants who came here were not us it were the lishus or yubins as they call and they came in here uh, from this general area of uh, putao which i told you they would come here uh, intermittently for hunting there were exotic animals here and what they would look for to most were the musk deer they were in plenty here so the first settlement of yubins uh, happened uh, somewhere in this direction where we have uh, gandhi gram the village called gandhi gram which is about uh, roughly 20 km from here so that is when the first settlement of lishus or the yubins they came in somewhere late 40s early 50s so they were the first settlers so i spoke of the aerial recce that yeah. sam rifle carried out in the early 50s uh, now that is when we saw this uh, dwelling this these hutments of uh, lishus and we realized yes there is somebody here mm. and uh, that is also when we realized we need to have our people also here understood again just pulling back and looking at the big picture uh, generally and and you know joining the dots in terms of india's lokis policy in myanmar and burma if you would like to do that for us as well um what is traditionally known to all of us is uh, of course now it's gained huge amount of traction and rightfully so is our uh, act east policy if it has to fructify at least the land access to myanmar lies through what is uh, mizoram and manipur what is not known to people is also there's a third axis which is pangsao pass which lies uh, due southwest of this uh, vijayanagar not very far from here uh, now this uh, through this pangsao pass goes this stillwell road or lido road as it was called this is a road which is roughly about 1762 kilometers passes through three countries uh starting from lido in assam goes through uh, into enters myanmar through pangsao and then you have uh, this road traversing almost 1000 plus kilometers through burma through the upper uh, chenjuan reaches and then it enters uh, yunnan province yeah. so uh, for a right east policy other, other than mizoram and manipur you could also consider accessing through these uh, through the, through pangsao pass only thing is instead of going to china we probably we could divert towards uh, thailand cambodia laos vietnam again just stepping back uh, general and uh, talking about uh, we uh, we knew why we needed to, uh, to come here uh, but if you could explain the how and because that is also quite a oh. super story okay uh, like i said the uh, time that we discovered that there are people living here the lushis was uh, late 50s and that was also matching with the time when the uh, chinese were making certain offensive overtures at the cost of repeating uh, so we decided to have our physical presence here uh, 
an operation or an expedition was first undertaken by roughly a platoon strength 32 people under an officer from 7 Assam Rifle uh, called Major Sumer. He is the person who uh, came with this body of troops and incidentally for their administration they had about uh, f five elephants and close to 160, uh, 126 porters. This this explains, the this, this explains how difficult it was. 126 porters, uh, uh, not porters, I mean uh, ponies, yeah. to maintain a platoon strength. So that explains what is the kind of logistics required for them. So this operation or this expedition was called as uh, Srijitka. Now it's a word which most of us don't know. I have to research what this word is. Uh, in Hindi, it means Jo Sundarta ke upar victory. Yeah, Vijay Pati. That is what is uh, Srijitka. Deep, so, deep haan, and why? Deep meaning. Because this is such a beautiful area as you would notice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this expedition was launched then uh, in the month of uh, March 1961. Just note it is uh, yep. a year and a half Absolutely. before the 62 war. Yeah. So that is when this first expedition came. This the body of troops, they uh, cut through very thick jungle, moved for about 95 days. Yeah. Thereafter the rains set in. So that was around June when they had to call this expedition. Right. Uh, so while they tried for 95 days, but they had to call this off. Uh, subsequently, once the rains subsided, the then IG, the force was being headed by a brigadier, uh, Major General A.S. Guraya, who, lead, uh, who was then a brigadier but later on went yeah. to become a Major. Yeah. So he as the head of the force, as the head of the force again, led the, led the expedition. Yeah. And now this was a larger force. This time. Successfully this time. And uh, if I recollect, they had about seven officers with them. Close to 112 or 120 people. As also 365 ponies. Uh, besides Seven. a large number of porters. So these people, their job was in some way made easy. Because the earlier expedition had come. Major Sumer who had taken part in the first expedition came along with them. Uh, but what I also forgot to mention in my earlier part was when Srijitga 1 happened, they came to this village, uh, Gandhigram. Yeah, which is now called as uh, Gandhigram. So uh, the Indian flag was established there by Major Sumer Singh uh, sometimes in June 1961. So when Srijitga 2 happened under General Goraya, uh, one, like I said, their job was made easier because a certain part of the route was already wrecked. Yep. Thereafter, they p progressed, came to where we are, uh, Vijayanagar. This was not called Vijayanagar. Uh, and from here, of course, uh, they had two sub parties one which went to Apungan Pass, which was there as I indicated, and okay. the second one to Chokan Pass, which is here. Yeah. So they had two teams which went to these and they hoisted the Indian flag. Now, here, interestingly, as they were coming to uh, Vijayanagar from Gandhigram, end route they met about 300 people. Mm. These 300 people had come from Chokan Pass. And when questioned, they said there is another batch of about 3,000 people uh, who had come in from China. Armed. armed, large number of them armed, who were to come here in a week's time. So this part is something which is not known to most of us. Everyone know of uh, what happened in Siachen, where we preempted the uh, Pakistan by 24 hours. Uh, General Kulkarni then a company, a company commander. Here, General Guraya's party preempted the Chinese by about a week. So, a week later, if we were not here, the Chinese the along with the would be probably different. very different. Not only the Chinese, but there were also Kachin rebels who were being tutored by the Chinese. So, either the Kachins or the Chinese or a mix of both would have been here. Today, we wouldn't have been here if General Guraya's party hadn't reached here uh, in uh, December uh, 1961. Just so again, going back, uh, General, to the settlement of your ex-servicemen and the importance of that. Now, in the current context where India is also working on a lot of vibrant villages and there's the purpose and the strategy behind that too, is there anything that can be learned from, say, Vijayanagar? Uh, in you, terms of, you know, establishing villages and settling people, yeah, uh, strategic yeah, the, places. The, the, uh, I, I would like to just make a small uh, correction here. Right. The uh, vibrant villages is actually meant for the villages which are along the LAC. Yeah. But here, the government has uh, 
uh, not only for the present financial year but also for the previous and the next uh, announced certain financial packages right which are coming here and essentially they are to do with the uh, improving the agriculture horticulture tourism going forward because there is certain infrastructure a lot of infrastructure has to come in here now, besides the other necessities like health electricity water yeah all of these are here there is a phc yeah. you would have noticed i just met the Absolutely. phc head here we gifted him certain items yeah. so all of that is in place uh, the fundamental yeah. there is even a police outpost here so all administrative elements that are needed yeah. in any place are here only thing is they need to be built up this vijayanagar itself is part of uh, changlang district of uh, arunachal but maybe going forward uh, we may find a case to make this an independent district Mm -hmm. considering the huge potential it has uh, for tourism not only in terms of the scenery or the scenic uh, extravaganza that is here but also the historical significance which i just mentioned again i i, I was just i know there's a difference between uh, vijayanagar and the vibrant villages but you know just in principle what you are doing here to make sure that people one can stay in a place and two they have all the amenities uh, or the uh, things that a normal person in life needs to do those vibrant villages will also need that kind of uh, yeah yeah just in reference to that again i'm glad you asked this question because there is something that i missed out yeah now uh, you saw the terrain as we yeah. flew in here till about 1 uh, and 1/2 2 years back there was no road Correct. coming here uh, so for all these uh, people here just to see a road they had to walk 7 to 10 days 7 to 10 days just to walk to see a road but now things are better there is a, a two way jeepable track which has come right. so people do come here in jeeps but going forward either by the end of this year surely by the middle of next year this will be a proper black top road and you will see a great amount of improvement that that is happening the uh, uh, alg where we landed yeah. is also one of the modes of sustenance uh, of the people here but uh, you would be surprised to know the in terms of percentages you have only 12 to 13% of days in a year when an aircraft can fly and which means uh, there are only 40 to 45 days in a year when an aircraft can you know the weather it can't be you can't predict in january which are going to be these 45 days so that you take a more is that an absolute game changer yeah once it uh, so the, the roads surely are going to make a great change and uh, of course this alg going forward will also get developed besides the other things that i spoke of again just uh, looking at larger picture of uh, assam rifles and involvement across the country in looking at jammu and kashmir and you, can you explain to us what the role is what the assam rifles is doing there yeah this is again uh, a thing which is not known to many that uh, we have our battalions currently we have two battalions there but traditionally we've been having battalions earlier also in fact uh, to be more specific in the 90s early 90s we had uh, six of our battalions there at various phases Uh, in a period extending over 8 to 10 years and this 8 to 10 years in the 90s is also a period which we called as a golden period in jnk because one of our battalions seven assam rifles uh where i incidentally happened to be a company commander later in in the year 1991 yeah. there's a major operation called as operation dudi may 1991 where in one operation over 3 days 72 hours led by a jso they were able to knock off or uh, eliminate the uh, 72 militants 72 pakistani trained militants not just that they also were able to confiscate or get 118 weapons of which more than 100 were ak series uh, besides this small uh, crowd of 15 people uh, or this uh, s- uh, lot of 15 soldiers were also able to capture or apprehend 15 militants so this is i think an all time record which is not known anywhere true and currently like i said we also have uh, two battalions in the kashmir valley and they are doing as commendable a job and again something that's probably not uh, known extremely widely is uh, the role of women in the assam rifles and it's not only uh, within uh, the country they've been stationed abroad they are currently stationed yeah. abroad as well uh, so amita we have a sanctioned strength of 2 and 1/2000 uh, women soldiers of which currently including the recruits we have 100 uh, 1800 rod uh, we have been uh, these uh, mailas do everything that a normal soldier does everything patrolling ambushes going in for operations uh, vehicle searches everything uh, and the point that you raised for united nations yes uh, from 2020 onwards we have been having our contingents going there 2020 we had 
a first set of about 16 women soldiers who went uh, to Golan Heights, then followed by another group of about 20 Maila soldiers who went to um, you know, Congo. Yeah. And currently, as we speak, we have about, uh, about 15 uh, Maila soldiers Abhi. in Abaya, Africa. In Sudan. Again, General, uh, we couldn't go on and on talking, but I know, you know, whether it's kind of making an uh, us uh, leave here. But again, we want to really appreciate you and all uh, your personnel who facilitated us to come here and spread the message so that uh, more and more people can just find out what's happening. Thank you, Abhutav. It was my endeavor to uh, make it known to the country how significant this part of the uh, country is and uh, the role that Assam Rifle has been playing. Thanks again, Sir. Thanks. Thanks. And just for our viewers, do send in feedback for this. Uh, we finally uh, got out on the field. What do you think of this report? You can get all the latest that we put up on our website or on our YouTube channel, including interviews like this with the Director General of Assam yeah, Rifles office. on our Telegram yes, channel. Sir. This is Abhidab Revi with Rohit Padnita in Vijayanagar in Arunachal Pradesh for Strategy Global. In our series East of the Northeast, we document our travel from the Pangsao Pass to Vijayanagar. Coming soon on Strat News Global.